Abba Yahweh, King, everlasting King of this universe, the almighty Elohim of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you, Abba Yah, the creator of the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that in them is, we come to you now, Abba Yah, to lift your name on high, to give you all praise, honor, and esteem. We come before you now, Abba Yah, at the head, at the beginning of your set apart Shabbat day, Abba Yah. Just to be in fellowship, Abba Yah, with you. And grateful, Abba Yah, that you allow us to come at your feet, Abba Yah, seeking you, seeking your face. We just give you thanks, Abba Yah, told our Rabbah Abba for sustaining and keeping us, protecting us from all hate, harm, and danger, Abba Yah. We thank you, Abba Yah, for your Ruach HaKadosh that leads us in the truth, bringing back our remembrance, Abba Yah, and teaching us all things. We thank you, Abba Yah, for the many blessings seen and unseen, for the food, shelter, clothing, Abba Yah, for the togetherness, Abba Yah, the support and love of, of Mishpaka. And Abba Yah, we just ask that you continue to put your hedge of protection around all of us as we try and walk in all your ways to be pleasing in your sight, Abba Yah. Understanding, Abba Yah, that we represent you and your majesty. We ask, Abba Yah, that you please continue to hedge about those that are in the path of these storms, Abba Yah, and let it to be a witness. Let it be a witness, Abba Yah, of your greatness and your promises. All your sons and daughters, Abba Yah, that are seeking you, keep them protected, Abba Yah, as Jacob's troubles begin to show themselves, Abba Yah. Give us the strength. Continue to peel the scales from our eyes, Abba Yah, that you may be able to bless us with the knowledge, the wisdom, and understanding, Abba Yah, that we can see our salvation and be bold enough, Abba Yah, to walk that straight path, Abba Yah, that you warned us that it's hard to find, Abba Yah, and that it's easy to fall off of. We thank you, Abba Yah, for the leaders that you've placed over us. We thank you, Abba Yah, for allowing them to feed us your bread of life, to quench our thirst, Abba Yah, with your living water. Please continue to inspire Maury Samak, Abba Yah, to deliver your message the way you want your message delivered. Continue to soften our hearts, Abba Yah, that we can receive it and continue to strengthen us, Abba Yah, in faith that we can walk it out Continue to send your Malachim before us, Abba Yah, to expose the traps and snares of your enemies who are trying to cut us off and keep us cut off from our heritage, our culture. We thank you, Abba Yah, for continuing to keep the elders, the Zakanin and the Imaot healthy. We thank you, Abba Yah, for your mighty daughters, Abba Yah, that are strengthening each other in the women's groups. We thank you, Abba Yah, for the Gabarim, the mighty men that are continuing to strengthen each other, Abba Yah, in the men's groups. And Abba Yah, as we go into these final feast days, we just ask Abba Yah that you continue to bless us with knowledge that we are rehearsing the righteous acts in truth, Abba Yah, that you will find our sacrifices, our hands raised to you, our offerings, Abba Yah, 
pleasing. Continue to touch those, Abiyah, and heal those that are maybe afflicted. Continue to give shalom to those, Abiyah, that may be vexed. Continue to bring families back together at your will, Abiyah, that may be splintered and have issues with each other. Give us the courage, Abba Yah, and the compassion to be obedient, to forgive those, Abba Yah, that may have trespassed against us as we ask that you forgive us of our trespasses against you. We just thank you, Abba Yah, for being our Elohim. We thank you, Abba Yah, for being the loving Abba that you are, that you are still blessing us with grace, Abba Yah, that you're still judging us in mercy and that you still love your children that are scattered to the four corners of this earth, Abba Yah. Blessed are you, Yahweh. Blessed is your name, Yahweh, and blessed is he that comes in your name, Yahweh. Halal, Yah, Bahasham Yahweh Shai Mashiach, in the name of your son, Yahweh Shai, our Messiah. Halal Yah, Amen Wa Amen. Hallelujah, Amen Wa Amen. Uh, Zakane, will you open the floor for the praise moment while I'm still setting up, please, sir? Come, Maury. All right, Mr. Bakar, the floor is open. The floor is open for praise and worship. And I'm going to be a little stingy today. I'm going to go first. <laughs> um, I just want to give the Most High all the praise, honor, and esteem, and thanks. Told our Reba Abba for bringing my Ben and his Isha through their delivery. They delivered last night Abba Yah, a healthy baby boy named Simeon. Mom is healthy, baby is healthy, should be home tomorrow or, or on Rishon the first day. And I just thank you. I thank you, Abba Yah, for hearing and answering prayers that the delivery was safe and that the uh, Ima and the Yaladin, the Yalad is safe and healthy, Abba Yah. And I just thank you. I thank you, Abba Yah, for sustaining me and my Mishpaka and all the Mishpaka that are trying to walk in all your ways. I just give you all praise, honor, esteem, and I say, Toda Abba Abba. Are you? Adon Shashamar, Shabbat Shalom, floor is yours. I think uh, Adon Shashamar dropped off, so we'll give him the floor when he comes back on. Uh, Ima Adri, Shabbat Shalom, floor is yours. Shabbat Shalom. I just want to start by giving all, all, all praise and all honor and all esteem. This has been such a beautiful week. And Yom Torah was the icing on the cake. The word was told, the food, the fellowship. And when I Think about how many years I wasn't in this truth and how I was a part of celebrating pagan holidays. It's like there was a time when I never felt that celebrating these feasts could be as joyous and as, as joyful as it was. I, I just cannot explain how beautiful it's been. And I mean, I've been reflecting on it all week long. We just had such a wonderful time. I, I mean, our, our group has transitioned. There have been a few people who we loved who have left and then others who come in, what have you. But the group that we have now just feels so comfortable. It feels so much like family. It's like 
it's like old times, the way that it once was before with me in the beginning. And I'm, I'm just so grateful and I just praise Abba. And my prayer every day to Abba is to take me before you ever allow me to turn away from this truth. Because it's just so much joy knowing that I'm someplace where I'm supposed to be. I'm being fed and there's just so much enjoyment here. And I, I just praise Abba for all of you all and for the fellowship that we had, for the word that we received, even on Shabbat. I just, I just can't imagine being anywhere else but where I am. And I just praise Abba for that. I say all honor and glory and esteem to him. Hallelujah. 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 Toda Reba Ima for those words. Toda Reba, like you said, uh, I just, we, we didn't know what we were missing out on. We, we didn't know what we were missing out on those of us that grew up outside the truth. Um, I, I, I echo those, those feelings, uh, Ima. There's no place I'd rather be um, than in the truth of the Most High. And these feast days, uh, even like you said, the Shabbats, and anytime we can get together in fellowship, um, I, I'd rather be nowhere else. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Told off those words, Ima. I saw uh, Shashimar again. He must be in a, and the storm might, might be uh, messing with his connection because it looks like he dropped off again. Um, Ima Newkirk, floor is yours. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Give it on to the Most High, to my each, to everyone that's on the line. I just thank and praise y'all how you brought me through the week. I'm just like uh, Ima Andre. I'm so thankful for how uh, the feast day. I'm just looking forward to the rest of the feast days. And I just thank and praise y'all for the mission call that we have now. I'm just like her. Uh, we all still seem like family. And I just praise y'all for all he's done. I just praise y'all for how he took me through a week. And I am praise y'all uh, for um, how things that he had put in my spirit and I'm, I'm doing what he says. And and I just praise y'all and I see the results from it because sometimes y'all tells me things and I'll be thinking, should I say that? Should I do this? But I'm praising y'all that I'm getting the boldness to do what I need to do. And I just praise and thank y'all for your prayers. I just praise y'all for the 12 o'clock prayer. I just praise y'all for all he's doing because he is such a good merciful Elohim. And I just love him and I, I just want to do it, do right by him. And that's live the life that he wants me to live. Not what I want to live, but the life that he wants me to live because he sent his son to pay the price for me. I've been bought with the price. It's no longer than I. But it's him that lives in me. Praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ima. Toda Reba. Toda Reba. All praise on and esteem to the Most High. The family that he's put together, the Mishpaka, uh, the Knesset that he put together, uh, all praise on and esteem is the Most High's. Uh, uh, I'm going to let Shashimar go in. He's, he's had his hand up for a while. Um, I'm, I'm gonna let him go in before he, he drops off again. So, uh, don't Shashimar, Shabbat Shalom, the floor is yours. Shabbat Shalom, can you hear me? Can, can. Okay, yeah, my power went out, so I'm using my uh, cell phone data, so hopefully it doesn't go out. But I just want to give all praise to the most high, y'all, you know, for another Shabbat day. Uh, you know, I feel like I, you know, I, I increased in a walk, and I feel like that my Imunai, you know, has increased, my faith has increased, but I always say, you know, I still, I see your mic is still open, I don't, okay, he's, he's, he's probably going through that storm, um, so Kote yeah, Shakira, I can go ahead, you, you, you're going yeah, in you know, and out, but don't, Con. Can you hear me now? We can hear you. You keep going in and out, though, but we can hear you. Okay, yeah, I give all principles to y'all for all the to anyone for anything that I may have done, you know, or have said. And a lot of times, you know, I focus on the things that I have done, but also. Now I focus on the things that I did not do or the things that I did not say. So I just wanted to say that 
you know, um, before the most high, before everyone on this call, you know, ask that he can forgive me for anything I have done or anything that I have failed to do, you know, because my goal is to be perfect in the most high. And also was reading the scripture, uh, praise be to the most high for putting it on my, uh, my lead, my heart. And it's first John chapter one, verse eight. And it says, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So I give all praise to the most high Yah for all that he has done for me and putting that precept on my lip, on my heart. And, you know, even though the power is out, you know, I still say, you know, the Shabbat is a delight. And I hope, you know, that we all can enjoy the most high Shabbat regardless of the things that are happening around us. Sayu. Hallelujah. Toda Rabbah, don't, Toda Rabbah, I don't. And, and like you said, we, we should always be examining and, and where we can make correction, you know, um, make that correction. And I just want to say too, Adon, that every, every, every day <laughs> that I, I get to hear you um, speak, honestly, um, I, I see nothing but, but, but the most high is um, growing you and, and shaping you. Uh, and it's it's an encouragement to me personally. So I thank you. I thank you for for your words, and I thank you for that pull you just pulled uh, uh, in First John. That you know, if we if we think we we walking around here uh, holy and and fully holy and no sin in us, then we're deceiving ourselves and and lying to ourselves. So toda right on time with that precept. Toda riba, all praise, honor, and esteem to the Most High. Um, Akoti Shakira, Shabbat Shalom, floor is yours. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Mishpaka. I want to give all honor and esteem to my father, Yah, who's in heaven. Um, he's also my covering. So I want to say Toda Yah, Toda Yah for this day. I want to thank him for another Shabbat. I want to thank him for the feast day that has just passed and the upcoming feast day that is coming up. You know, um, I just want to say that, you know, I, I've, I've, I've been so quiet. I don't really say much, but, you know, lately it's like, I feel like I've been chastised, you know, like, you know, yeah, it's trying to chastise me because, um, you know, the other day something says to me, you know, you know, you, you, you talk a lot any other time and you're always speaking up. So, you know, when it comes to praise, you know, you need to open that mouth because I say anytime, any other time that you got to say something, you're going to speak that mind. So, you know, when it comes to speaking up, when it comes to the most high, you got to, you know, take that time to say something. And, you know, it's just been dwelling on my heart. And I say, you know what? Yes, you're right. I'm going to start speaking up more and I'm going to start giving thanks more. I'm going to start, you know, I'm going to start doing more. So, you know, I, I just want to, you know, put that out there. And, you know, also, I just want to, you know, thank y'all for the little things, the small things, you know, because today, you know, I worked the last couple of nights in a row and I got off this morning and the storm was, you know, hard, you know, coming on hard down here in the Carolinas, we a lot of winds. And I realized that a lot of places were closing down. So I was running out of gas. You know, I didn't have any, you know, I saw like a lot of, you know, places were like, I guess the lights were out or something wasn't working with the gas pumps. And I see like, you know, each time I try to go to a gas station, it's like they were closed. They were closed. So I was like, oh my goodness, you know, I hope, you know, before Sabbath, I can get some gas. So I went home like around three something, four o'clock, you know, and then I said, okay, I'll just rest a little bit. Then I'll circle back around and try to see if I, you know, I can get something before for sundown and you know around six o'clock I said sundown to seven o'clock I said I got to make sure I got some gas in my tank and told I yeah told I yeah I saw a gas station that was indeed open and I was able to get some gas and I just thank and praise y'all for you know just doing those little things you know it's a little thing sometimes we're not you know I, and how he opened little doors for us and I just want to say told I yeah for all that he has done will do and continue to do all praises to the Most High, Yah, and I yield. Hallelujah! All praise, honor, and esteem to the Most High. You know, uh, if we're faithful in the Most High, the Most High looks out for us. You know, um, <clears throat> and so Toda Reba uh, to the Most High, Yah. You know, for 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 keeping His promises. You know, and 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 really giving it to us. Um, his truth, 
And if we just rely on, you know, rely on him and, and, and have no doubts, like you, like, you, you know, he, he, he's, uh, he's faithful and true. And, and, and as far as the praise and worship, you know, um, my bot, uh, Zion, she kind of reminded me, we had a talk a few days ago and, and she was saying, kind of like what you're saying, you know, the most high blesses us that we can bless others. So your testimonies and, and your praises to the most high is not just yours. <laughs> it's not just yours. You know, that that's a blessing to everybody else too. So the most high wants that out there, you know, to, so that, that you could be building up somebody else's faith. You could be encouraging somebody else. So don't hold back on that praise and worship, but the most high is blessing you and teaching you things and, 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 you know, um, protecting you and all of that praise them praise them out loud you know so that that others can hear it you know it's not just your blessing uh the most high blesses you so you can bless others also so toda toda reba for for your testimony uh akoti uh imaro shabbat toda. hallelujah E. My Rose, if you're speaking, uh, you're still on mute. Can you hear me? Yeah, we got you now. Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom, family. Shabbat shalom. I just want to give praises to God, to Yah tonight for this week off from work. I want to give him praise for the feast. And it was so great. The word was awesome. The fellowship was awesome. I just want to give praise to him for the 12 o'clock prayer every day that I have been on. It has been a blessing to me because when I'm at work, I don't have a chance to get on at 12 o'clock. And it's been such a blessing just to be in the midst of the prayer and knowing that when there's two or three gather, he's in the midst. And I just want to say Toda for the prayer, for the prayers that went forth for my grandson and even for me, because my desire is to serve y'all with all my heart, my soul and my strength. My desire is for him to continue to show me me was in me and just revealed to me my desire is to to walk in agape love real love and not pull back when he say do something to do it and I just want to say hallelujah for the Sabbath on the night I'm looking forward for the study my heart just feel overjoyed tonight because he's yet protecting us and watching over us and providing for all. I thank y'all for Moray and all the Morays and all the teachers that be online. I just want to say Toda and I yield. Toda, Toda, everybody, Ima, for those words. Um, you know, most high is, 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 is awesome. <laughs> the most high. It's awesome, especially um, when you when you when you give those testimonies like that. It just it just encourages everybody else, you know. And and that's the witness. That's that's what the Most High set us apart for, you know. Um, so Toda Toda Reba for for your words okay. of encouragement and 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 your esteem to the Most High. Hello, Yah. Hallelujah, Toda. Baid Francis, Shabbat Shalom, Flo George. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Um, first, I want to give all praise, honor, and esteem to the Most High Yah for life, for freedom, for his word, and for this Mishpaka in this day. And I also want to acknowledge my Ish, which is my head covering. Um, I just want to give praise to Yah for all, but specifically for growing on um, the Mishpaka. Um, as my Abba said, you know, I have a, 
a nephew, a new nephew um, that was born and, and we're growing the next generation. And then as I'm looking at this mishpaka, the one that Yah has bought us together, I see that it's growing as well. And it's just such a joy seeing um, this generation as well as the next generation uh, growing in Yah. My, um, for Yom Teruah, my, um, my youngest, Hezekiah, he, uh, my, my, he, he took the shofar and then he put it in his mouth and he said, ooh, now he didn't blow, it didn't sound, but you know, he saw his, his, um, his family blowing the shofar and he's not even one yet and he's doing this. And, and that, that is just, it's a blessing. And knowing that the next generation is, is going to have what we didn't have, which is, you know, Torah at, at, at the beginning. Well, some of us, um, and that is a blessing um, and more so a blessing that uh, we have sisters and brothers and elders and mores um, that are, imams are elders that are, um, that are growing together. And so I just thank Yah for growing my mishpaka uh, and then growing our mishpaka and, and, I just want to give him praise for that because it's just a beautiful sight seeing us all grow together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Toda Raba. Toda Raba. Bati. Um, yeah, it is, it is, it is uh, amazing. It is amazing to see. I don't know if y'all, y'all seen it, man, but every time I see the Yaladim enjoying the fellowship, enjoying uh, especially when we get together on the feast days and the and the, the playing of the drums and and the dancing and the singing and all of that and I'm thinking just like you man it is so awesome that they're growing up in this you know that's the next generation and and so Toda Raba for for bringing that out um, Toda Raba for bringing that out Hallelujah uh, we're gonna go to uh, Don Michael and then uh, Akoti Willeen and then uh, We'll begin the service. Um, Shabbat Shalom, Adon Michael, floor is yours. Shabbat Shalom. I will yield to Akoti Willie. Uh, uh, Akoti Willie, Shabbat Shalom, floor is yours. Toda, Toda, oh, Michael, that was very nice of you. <laughs> Can everybody hear me okay? Uh, God. Shabbat Shalom. Um, I, I'm just so excited to be um, online tonight. I had a wonderful week this week. Um, I, I praise God for uh, the service that we had this week. I still don't know the name of everything, but I'm telling you, I feel like a leaping in my soul. Um, today, I took out time to listen to the to the blowing of the shofar. Somebody sent a... a a record, like a recording of the blowing of the shofar. And I was at work, uh, I do Uber, and I was at work um, sitting at the, the resting place waiting, you know, waiting for my time for, you know, to be called to go to the airport. And I played that, the blowing of the shofar. And I mean, it was like, my it was like I was a flower just opening up my belly just I mean my spirit just opened up to the Lord and it just oh my god it was just a feeling that it was it was so amazing it was amazing I'm telling you it was so amazing I sat there and I cried it was like a, a scripture came to my mind a scripture came to my mind I hope y'all don't mind. I'd like to read it. Is it all right if I read it? It's really short. Yeah, yeah. It says in, in Romans, the eighth chapter and the 19th verse, it says, for I, for I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not to be worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. This is the scripture that I'm talking about, the 19th verse. It says, for the earnest expectations of creation 
earnestly await for the revealing of the sons of God. And what that scripture means to meant to me at that time was like, I was coming into the understanding of what, the, of what it really means to serve Yah. You know, I'm coming into the understanding of what it really means to serve my God. And I was, I was in awe today and it, and it was all over me. I picked up this Brazilian lady and she sat in the back of my car. Okay, so the anointing is all over my car. I'm finished crying, you know, I'm finished snotting and everything. And um, she's sitting in the back of my car and I'm playing a little worship music, but I'm playing it real low. So uh, she starts talking to me. I don't even know what about, but she starts crying. So I turned off my hand sign because I got her to the place where she needed to go. And I'm, and listen, I need to be taught more because, because of the way that I've been taught to lead people to the Lord. But I just went to Romans, Romans uh, 10 and nine, the way I know how to go. Okay. That's what I did, <laughs> you know, because yeah. this lady was crying out to know God just by being in my presence. Oh, my God. So I just I said, listen, I'm just going to. And then I said and I was just sitting there talking to her for a minute. It was so awesome, y'all. It was just so awesome just by being in the presence of God this week. You know, it was like, well, so I said, listen, I said, you know, God, I, I began to talk to her. And then I wanted to, I wanted to, I was saying, you know, yeah, I was saying words like yeah, like trying to bring it in there because I'm not really knowledgeable, you know? So I was saying, yeah, want your whole heart. And she was like, how do I get close to him? I brought her through the sinner's, I brought her through the sinner's prayer. And then I said, you know, I said, all you have to do is just say, yeah, I just want you to come into my heart. Just come into my heart and show me how to live. Show me how to live. I said, don't worry about Baptist. Don't worry about this. And don't worry about. And the, and the more I kept saying that, she said, but I don't know how. And then it, it, it started coming into my mind that she was that she was a part of an organization and I, I really wasn't getting it, but, but she was really hurt and it had to do with her mother. And I was, and all of a sudden I said, oh my God, I said, you've been hurt. And I said, I said, and it had to do with your family. And she was, and then she just started pouring out crying. I said, so then I used another word. I said, you know, we have some emas you know, and, you know, in our, you know, in our, you know, body that, that, that would really love you. They would really love on you, you know? So she, I said, but you know what, you're going to have to search God and you're going to, I didn't know what to say y'all, <laughs> but, but, but I'm going to learn. I'm going to learn because I don't know what God is doing with me, but he's doing something awesome. He's bringing, he's bringing, he, he's just, the, the anointing is, is falling on me and I need some instructions. I'm just going to tell y'all, <laughs> I need some instructions because I feel the anointing falling on me and I, and I just, you know, I yield, I yield because I don't, I, I just, I just wanted to share that because I want you, Emas, some people, some women that are seasoned to, to pull me in and talk to me and, and help me because I know that, you know, that God is really is is really working on me and I need to I need to be in line. I need to, you know, I need to be in order. And, you know, I need I I need to do I need to do things 
the way that I should do them like the right way, but and I need to know how. So on that note, I yield. Hallelujah, my sister, hear me. Y'all put her in your car. He placed her there. Nothing happens by happenstance, nothing by chance. And what words you gave to her was from your heart and the utterance was from the father, what you knew to say. You couldn't have known that it was her family that was causing hurt in her life. Only Yah could give you those words to say to her. What was said was what was needed. You had planted a seed, Father will send someone else to water and he will make the increase. So praise y'all for your obedience. Hallelujah. Toda. I second that. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Um, and, and like the Ima Oak just said, uh, Koti, um, you know, let, let, the, let the, 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 the Ruach rule, but, but, but you know, really um, your testimony is powerful, you know? Um, it, it, don't worry about what words you need to say, but just testify of the greatness of the Most High of what he's done in your life. And that's a, that's a powerful thing for somebody that, that is seeking, um, you know, like relief or, or, or some, you know, and sometimes you just listen. Sometimes people just want to be able to, 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 to get some things off of their, their chest. And, and sometimes we just need to be there to listen. Just sometimes we just need to be there to listen. So Toda Riba, um, um, we get some, 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 uh, Tob, Gadal Tob, some, some, some Tob Ima Oat, um, more is, is, um, a great instructor. He knows the scriptures. So, so don't, don't, we will be, we will be in touch. Um, especially, I know that, uh, Imaz will reach out to you and, and then, you know, just, just grow. You've got to grow in the truth. You know, I, I know how it is. <laughs> Once you get a taste of, of the truth, you know, and, and we want to run, we want to run hard and fast, but, 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 um, you know, we got to grow in the truth. And then, like I said, I think the most powerful thing we got a lot is the testimony of how great the most high is in our life. So hello, yeah, hello, yeah, for your testimony and, and just stay uh, motivated, stay hungry. Um, Adon, Michael. Um, Thank you. We, we, we'll have time at the end uh, of service. So I'm going to turn it over to Maurice Samak to get the, uh, get the um, study uh, started. Maurice Mott, how are you? Hallelujah, hallelujah. All praise on the steam be to the Most High. Um, first, I would like to give all praise to the Most High for us all being safe uh, during the hurricane. And definitely for our Mishpacha that's down in the Florida area, Rose and her family and just the other brothers and sisters, yet a die and all of them that's in the Florida area that the Most High covered, and those that are in South Carolina, as well as us here. So we give all honor and steam to the Most High for us all being safe. and. Uh, just told all y'all for all the testimonies that have come forward from everyone. Um, it does my heart good, especially when I'm hearing new people that uh, are embracing the feast days and just hearing about them and then embracing them. And we have some that, you know, been in the walk for years and don't even really uh, still keep the feast days. You have some that speak against the feast days. They're speaking against the commandments. We have new people that's embracing them from hearing the commandments of the Most High. So it just does my, uh, my heart good. So I give all honor and esteem to the Most High. The rock is Kodash name. All right, Mr. Baka, I have quite a bit to read tonight, uh, so we probably won't get to it all. And because, uh, and I just want to say this to uh, uh, Ms. Willine, um, and I heard your testimony, you know, just, just take your time, you know, just enjoy y'all, enjoy what he's revealing to you. And none of us know it all. I still consider myself a babe in the most high. I still need instructions. And so, um, as Zakane Yaquab said, get with the Imams, the Imams will reach out to you. Um, there is a, a, a new members class that we are reconstructing and putting together. And, you know, we have um, some of our uh, sisters that are not imams, but they are very thorough um, in the word. And we will be uh, letting some of them reach out to you and, you know, letting you ask your questions and things, so on and so forth to them. And they can um, help you along in this journey. There's going to be, um, and I'm just saying this to the whole group right now, but uh, Ms. Willine, I know you're one of the newest ones in. 
So there will be some things that you're accustomed to doing and, you know, they may not line up and uh, with what the word actually says, but we all had to grow to that point. So um, you don't have to worry about trying to have just the right term or what's the Hebrew phrase and so on and so forth. What our main thing is, is that we just want to be a light unto people. So, you know, uh, when people come to our presence, they should be able to feel the love of Yah in us. And as you said, when she got in your car, what she felt being in your car. So it's not going to be necessarily how much we always know, but the portion that we do know, we apply it to our lives. We're making the change and we're letting the most high shine through us. So may the most high continue to strengthen in you, increase in you and reveal to you all that you need to know according to his uh, truth. So all honesty be to the most high. All right. So we're going to be starting off tonight. Um, Kanaka, if you could, let's first turn to the book of Matthews chapter one. We're going to the book of Matthews chapter one. And we've been focusing on the Moedim of the feast days, which we'll be getting right back to. But I want to cover something of utmost importance. And because we know some of you are new, I know y'all hear us use the term Torah a lot. And there's been um, questions asked sometime um, from those that are new, uh, certain questions, because they hear us use Torah, 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 right? So the reason why we use the term Torah a lot is because that's what was given to Moses to give to the children of Israel which are the instructions of the Most High. The first five books of the Bible, what's commonly called the Bible, is the Torah. That's where all the instructions, the law, statutes, commandments, that's the covenant of the Most High that was written for his people. And so because we've come up in a society where it has been taught that the laws are done away with, we spend a lot of time meditating on them, teaching them, learning them, um, adjusting as we find out things that we've been doing in error ourselves while um, attempting to keep the Torah to the best of our ability. And sometimes when we're quoting Torah a lot, it gets mixed and people start asking, well, do y'all believe in the Messiah? And so that question then comes up because when you come from the Christian background, all you hear is Jesus, 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 Christ, Christ, Christ. And so when you come over here, you're hearing Torah, Torah, Torah. And so for a new person, they can wonder, well, do they believe in what's commonly called Christ, which we refer to as the Messiah? Short answer to that is yes, we do. Um, but the difference is uh, the way we believe in him is according to the truth as it is written, what his true name was, what his true purpose was, his function was, what his true walk was, which is contrary to what Christianity has taught. So as we've been covering um, the past couple of weeks on paganism, how paganism came into the church as well as into the walk, there's certain terms, terminologies, way we worship. We covered last week how it says that they go about to establish their own righteousness while not submitting to the righteousness of Elohim. So church have taught us things a certain way. We do certain customs and traditions based upon the way the church taught us, which has absolutely nothing to do with the most high. And sometimes we feeling that we're being extra spiritual when we actually being really further removed from the most high than actually being closer to him. So, but the beauty of the most high is that in his word, it tells us that he winks at us in our ignorance. When we just don't know something, he winks at us while he understands that we're trying to call out unto him, but we need to understand it from the proper perspective. So we believe in the whole book. We believe in the volume of the book. We do understand that there are scribal errors here and there. Uh, we understand that there are things that when man put their hands into the word of Elohim, they try to, uh, especially with commentaries, they try to lead you to believe from the perspective of more so the Christian doctrine and not actually what an ancient Hebrew would, would have believed at a time when the statement was made and not knowing the volume of the book or not knowing the Torah first, then we don't, really don't understand some of the things that's written in the Brit Kadashah. So I made that long statement to start here. We're going to the book of Matthews chapter one. And one, Kanakya. Matthew chapter one and one. Matthew 1, verse 1. The book of the generation of Yahshua Mashiach, son of David, the son of Abraham. All right, Paul's here. So I just wanted to go ahead to verse 1 just to establish what this book is talking about. It's talking about the genealogy or the generations of Yahusha, Yehoshua, which is commonly called Jesus, um, the Messiah, which in, in KJV is going to say Christ, right? So this is the book that's now focused on him, the genealogy, him coming into existence um, in the flesh, all right? Drop down to verse uh, 18. Now the birth of Yahshua Mashiach was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph, 
before they came together. She was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put away privilege. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of Yah appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, you son of David, fear not to take unto you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Yah Shah, for he shall save his people from their sins. Hallelujah. So it's going into now what's looked at as the parents of the Messiah, which is uh, Joseph, or Yosef, and Miriam, or Mary, commonly called. And it says, and the child that was within her was of the Ruach Kakodesh of the Holy Spirit, meaning it was not going to be a, a unrighteous seed within her. It was a righteous seed that's come forth by the Ruach of the Most High, right? Now, the focal point that I want to look at is verse 21 tells us what his name actually is or what the angel or the Malachim told her he was to be called. And we've covered, as I can, Yaakov was covered in his culture portion, what the word name means and the importance of a name. So a name is going to not only mean the phonetic sound that it makes, but also the character and authority of a name. So whenever Hebrews named their children, the names a lot of times had a meaning or, or, or a destination that they were uh, 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 appointed for. So it says, and he shall bring forth a son and you shall call his name Yahusha, Yahoshua. Some says Yahweh or Yeshua, but he shall save his people from their sins. It is telling you what his name is as well as defining or telling you the purpose of why he's coming, okay? So first of all, let's go, and his, you shall call his name. In the KJV or uh, the King James Version, it's going to have uh, Jesus written there. When you look the word up for Jesus that's in the KJV, if you use a coordinates, it's going to give you a, a numerical number that you look for in the Greek, and it's going to tell you it references back to the name 3091, which is in the Hebrew, which is going to be Yehoshua in the, uh, in the coordinates, because he was not a Greek. He was not a Latin. Jesus is a Latin name, but he had a Hebrew name because he wasn't Hebrew. And he came to the Hebrew people and the church have uh, within the paganism that the church has been putting out. They've also used a replacement theology. Replacement theology is they've replaced the actual covenant to the nation of Israel and the most highest people with the church. This book was never written to no denomination of church, whatever branch it may be. It was basically, he was sent to save his people that was under covenant with the most high, that broke the covenant with the most high. And the reason the covenant with the most high was broken was because of sin. So because that sin that Israel committed, it separated them from the most high. So in order for them to return to the most high, repentance was gonna have to take place, but it was also gonna have to be a sacrifice for the sins of the people as someone to lead them properly back to the Most High. So it says, and you should call his name Yahusha or Yehoshua, which is Yah is salvation, okay? That name means Yah is salvation. So I know we're all familiar with the term, I come in my father's name. So the Messiah himself said he comes in his father's name. It means a couple of things. Literally, his father's name is Yah. So he's coming as a junior in his father's name, meaning I have the same name as my father, but I'm also coming to my father's name, character, and authority to do the will of my father. So he was sent to Israel and not to the church. So again, the church is teaching doctrines or theology or, or misunderstandings because they didn't first have a Torah sound understanding to understand the covenant that Yah made with his children, the covenant being broken and all the history surrounding Israel and the Most High, okay? So it says, for he shall save his people from their sins. What does that mean? He's come to deliver them, not just by saying, I believe and I shall be saved, but by coming to showing them how to walk upright in the Most High. As we've covered in some of the past studies, and we see that the Messiah, he ate a clean diet. He kept the Shabbat. When he taught in a synagogue, it was on the Shabbat. When any of his major sayings were made that even we have commonly heard preachers use in church, what they don't know historically around a lot of the sayings that they use from the Messiah he made those statements on or before or sometime during a Moedim, which is an appointed time or a feast day, all right? So he came to save his people from their sins. So that's his function. That's his purpose. He did not come to let us be able to say, oh, all I have to do is believe in Jesus and I shall be saved. He came to tell us not to sin. 
He came to show us how to live according to the Torah of the Most High. All right. So that was his purpose and his function. Let's jump from there to Hebrews chapter 10 and start with verse uh, 7, Adon. Hebrews 10, and we're going to start with verse 7. Hebrews 10, verse 7. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me, to do your will, O he. Read on. Above when he said sacrifice and offering, and burnt offerings and offerings for sin, you would as not. Neither had pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Okay, so stop here for a second, and we're going to go back to verse 1. So I just want to jump down to verse 7 and let it be known that the volume of the book that's written, if anyone knows anything about the text, there was no brick cotter shot or any New Testament written. So when we come to first start studying the word of Elohim or the word of the Most High, we have to understand what was written, what wasn't written, and what was being recited, and what was meant when it was being recited. So what was recited there is, lo, I come in the book that is written, the volume of the book is written to me. You can find that same statement written in the book of Tehillim, which is the book of Psalms. So in order for there to be a New Testament, it had to be the Old Testament first, or should I say the Torah, as well as the Tanakh, and we need to have that understanding. So now jump back up to verse one. For the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices which they offer year by year continually make the comers there too perfect. Read it all. For then would they not have ceased to be offered, because that the worshippers once purged should have had no more conscience of sins. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is not possible for that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he said, of sacrifice and offering, you would as not, but a body you have prepared. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, you had no pleasure. Verse then, said I, mm -hmm. then said I, lo, I come in the Bible of the book. It is written to me to do your will, all he. Okay, so let's stop it for a moment. So what we're seeing here is it's saying, for the law or for the Torah having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices they offered year by year continually make the comers there unto perfect. So what we're seeing here is that when we were taught in church that the laws are done away with, uh, the book of Romans is one that's commonly used, the book of Galatians. And this text here is also something that the Christian church used a lot of times to say, you don't have to do the laws because see, the law didn't work. That's not what this is saying. The law works. We broke the law. We broke the covenant. The Most High gave us the commandments and we were supposed to keep them. And so in breaking the commandments within the laws themselves, there were sacrifices and offerings that had to be made for sin if you committed a, a sin or transgression. So that worked for that time period, but the whole purpose of the law is to renew your heart, to renew your mind, to transform you. When you see what it says, you're supposed to do it because you love the most high and not because any man or woman has to make you do it by uh, threatening you with stoning or anything like that. The law itself, once you actually see the word of Elohim, it should make you want to change. So for a lot of the hearers at that time, they were hearers and not really doers of the law. They were just bringing the sacrifices, but they weren't actually changing their behavior. They were just offering according to the letter of the law. So when they offered a the sacrifice, they didn't really offer the sacrifice with a repentant heart. They were just offering a sacrifice because it's written that if you do this, then you have to sacrifice something for your sin instead of them actually truly repenting and not returning back to the sin. So it says those sacrifices, which were offered year by year, continually make the comers there unto perfect. They do not make them therefore perfect. For then would they have not, not have ceased to be offered because that the worshipers once purged should have had no more conscience of sins. Had they had those sacrifices purge their minds of those sins, 
then they wouldn't have had to keep doing the same thing over and over. But they continued to do the same sin because their minds weren't renewed. Their minds weren't purged from the sin. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he said, sacrificing often thou wouldest not, but a body thou hast prepared me. And burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. So he's basically saying, yes, that was in the laws, but the most I had no pleasure in that. What you were really supposed to do after you actually made that sacrifice, your mind was supposed to be renewed. And y'all, excuse me, my, uh, if, if I do get go off lines, I can't just pick up from it for a moment because sometimes this lights are flickering still and, and I might lose the internet again. Okay, back to the script. So basically when the Messiah came, he came to actually get to the hearts of the men and women that he touched. That's why when he would come to someone, when they brought the woman um, to him, said that she was in adultery, according to the law, she was to be stoned. But they didn't follow the law themselves. They were supposed to bring both the man and the woman. So he said, he without sin cast the first stone, right? So basically when he did that, he showed her a level of mercy, compassion, and love. He spoke to her, he forgave her, and then he told her, go and sin no more. She was thankful for that. She appreciated that. And then she felt the love, like what Akoti Willian is saying about what she's feeling coming to these commands. It's, it's a renewing taking place. For some people, the Torah actually renews. And for some of us, we're just actually going through the motions by just having the commandments. And that's what we've done as, as our forefathers have done for many years. But the Torah is supposed to renew you and coming to the Messiah is supposed to renew your thought process. So she appreciated what he'd done for her. The question is today, do we appreciate what he's done for us? Because if you think about if we still had to offer an offering as they offer for sin, back then, now, we don't even have the livestock to offer for our sins. Or if we would have to go purchase, we would go broke trying to go pay for something to offer to the most high for our sins, our transgressions, or our iniquities. But the Messiah came and he stood in the gap for us to deliver us from that burden of those offerings, but he did not do away with the law itself. The laws we're still supposed to be obedient to, but the sacrifice, he was now that sacrifice that was going to stand in the gap for Israel. All right. Let's jump back to the book of Why You Cry of Leviticus. Chapter 23. Jump into the book of Leviticus, chapter 23. Well, before you do that, Adon, let's go ahead and go to Romans first. Let's go to Romans first. Get for me Romans 5. That way I can go ahead and have these scriptures out. Give me Romans 5 and 11. And then we go back to the uh, Torah. Romans 5, verse 11. And not only so, but we rejoice. We also re we also joy in Elim through our master, Yahshua Mashiach, by whom we have now received the atonement. Okay, so I just want to go here for a moment. We'll be coming back here. I just want to put it on the floor for right now. And not only so, but we also joy in Elohim through our master, Yahushua Mashiach, commonly called Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement, okay? And I just want to go there for the reason of understanding that when it says those things, as we were reading in, in uh, uh, Hebrews a moment ago, it said the law having a shadow of good things to come, but it's not the very image. So what the law was doing was preparing us for the coming of the Mashiach for the one that was going to actually show us how to really keep the law in our hearts, in our inward parts, without uh, returning back to. So when we truly come to him, when we truly follow him, there's a renewing of the mind that takes place because he is the atonement for us. So reading this without understanding the Torah first does not have the same value after reading the Torah first and then reading this to get a fuller scope of what actually atonement is meaning for us. So now let's go back to the book of why you cry, commonly called Leviticus, chapter 23. Leviticus 23, and start about verse 26. So Y'all speaking to Moses saying, also on the 10th day of the seventh month, there should be a day of atonement. 
it should be in holy convocation unto you. And he shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto you. And he shall do no work in that same day. For it is the day of atonement. To make an atonement for you before Yah For what so the soul it be that do that shall not be afflicted in that same day. He should be cut off from among his people. And what sort of a soul it be that doeth any work in that same day? The same soul will I destroy from among his people. You shall do no manner of work. It is a it shall be a statute forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. It shall be a, unto you a Sabbath of rest, and you shall afflict your soul in the ninth day of the month at even. From even unto even shall you celebrate your Sabbath. All right, hallelujah. So again, as we were covering um, uh, several times uh, these past couple of weeks, Leviticus, the 23rd chapter is where you find the Moedim or the appointed times or the holy days that the Most High say we should keep set apart and that we should celebrate or that we should observe, all right? And so when we was covering the portion about paganism and establishing our own righteousness, the Roman Catholic Church has brought paganism into the Roman Catholic Church the Christian church that does not consider themselves a part of the Roman Catholic Church has no idea that they are an offshoot of the Roman Catholic Church. And the traditions that the Roman Catholic Church brought into the church